let's uh, take a look at Psalms 24, verse 7, in the Passion Translation. And uh, I'm going to just throw a couple thoughts out there, and then we'll engage our hearts here in a little activation and see where we go. Uh, so we know this verse real well in uh, whatever version we are used to it. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, whatever. Open wide your doors. But Passion says, so wake up, you living gateways. Lift up your heads, you doorways of eternity. Welcome the King of glory, for he is about to come through you. Now, uh, the perspective there is it's making us to be the gateways, or at least that's the way I read it. Uh, I'd like to just hold our draw our attention to the word portal for a second, and then I'd like to just focus on us as being the gateways. And gateway and portal, pretty similar, pretty much synonymous. Uh, gateway is a portal. A uh, portal is a gateway, I think. There may be some differentiation between the two, but for the most part, they're the same. Um, when we think of portals, especially in the Pentecostal and charismatic uh, genre or uh, mindset, we usually say it in light of, uh, well, there's a portal over that city or a portal over that church or a portal over that person. And uh, I think that was the best we knew at the time. Uh, and I think it helped us to prompt or launch our faith because we didn't have a concept of already being in heaven. The concept of portal, almost by definition, at least certainly by usage, implicates that I see myself on earth and that God is somewhere on the other side of whatever that portal is. So it creates distance between us and God when we say the word portal, at least in the old definition. I do believe now that there is an upgraded definition that we can explore, embrace, uh, and activate. But in the old definition, it saw us as just mere earthlings, and we had to find those portals in order to access God. Now, that's, that's kind of sad, but that's where we were. And like I said, it was the best we knew, and it was actually pretty useful. I don't know if any of you were around Tommy Tenney back in the day. That guy, uh, back when we used the word portal and it was powerful to us, that guy was a portal. <laughs> that guy, uh, part of his uh, narrative was, he said, when there's a thin place between heaven and earth. Well, again, like I said, that was the best we knew. And I tell you, that resonated in my heart very deeply. He helped me big time uh, activate, engage, and move into some fresh things. But when I think nowadays of a thin place or what we would have then called a membrane or veil, I'm thinking, but wait a minute. Didn't Jesus obliterate the veil? Didn't he tear it from top to bottom? Didn't he make it non of, of no effect? And so, like I said, our old rhetoric, our old narrative regarding portals was the best we had, but it is, I think, going to have to either fall by the wayside or get an upgrade in definition, upgrade in the way we use it. Use it. So let's go back to uh, Psalm 24. And when it says, wake up, you living gateways. Now, let me tie in one more verse. And we've talked about this, but it, uh, it's these things are so, uh, I'll just speak for myself. The usage of some of these terminologies are so deeply ingrained in us from our past, our upbringing, our religious environments that we grew up in, that it's very difficult at times to get them extricated out of our vocabulary. For instance, I was out in uh, California here last uh, week or two, and one of our spiritual sons was leading worship and 
oh, it, we had taken everybody to heaven. It was a wonderful experience. And then he gets up to lead worship and he says, uh, uh, the, the bridge of this song is, do not shut, do not shut the heavens. That's the words in the bridge of the song. I'm sorry, I can't remember the rest of the song. And I'm like, first of all, that means you see yourself as an earthling. You see yourself as on earth. And you're hoping he doesn't shut the door so that the heavenly life flow gets squelched or stopped. And uh, so later on, I, I wasn't going to say anything. I thought, you know, he's doing so good. I'm so proud of him. No problem. But uh, before we parted ways those couple of days, he said, Mark, can anything I need to do, can you help me with anything? I said, uh, well, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I will sing as how this is the open door, you might say. Just a second. And so um, I said, uh, I find in myself I have to really work at uh, the words that create worlds. My thoughts create words and my words create worlds. And when I create a world of God might shut the door, that's that's kind of a scary possibility. Or if I'm asking him to make a thin place so I could come through the membrane between me and heaven, that just kind of does violence to what we understand right now to be more true. A better revelation and so uh, he was oh my gosh he says I never have thought of that he says thank you so much for bringing it to my attention because he's tracking with as best he can and so I'm very proud of him he did he did so good with it but now let's, let me pull in Nathaniel Jesus said to Nathaniel from now on you will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man well, Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. There weren't many other brethren or sistren uh, on the earth at that time. But uh, I think Jesus is not only pointing to himself, but since he is the pattern son, then if there are angels in descend, ascending and descending upon him, I believe the same is true for us. Now, partly that's for our sakes, but I think, as we're seeing here in Psalm 24, it's also for the sakes of those around us. We become the living portal for those who don't know that they're in heaven. Those who haven't yet been enlightened with revelation, rhema that's clearly in the word that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, since you have been raised... That's part of the theology. They just don't have an experience of it yet. So, God in his kindness gives you and I the ability, the capacity to be the go-between between them and heaven. And in our rhetoric, in our narrative then, we begin bringing them with us. And so, when this verse says, Wake up, you living gateways. Well, I see that about myself that I find myself slumbering, sleeping, kind of dull, kind of not uh, fully engaged with the vibrancy of being a heavenly being. And so I have to speak to myself once in a while. You know, uh, my dad, I can remember my dad, he would be preaching along and he'd want to make a point to himself. And he would take himself by the collar like this, you know, like you're going to pop somebody in the jaw. He'd take himself by the collar and he would quote uh, David in the psalm says, Hey, oh my soul, oh my soul, I'm talking to you. Why are you cast down? Hope in the Lord. <laughs> and of course, he was making that uh, point to the rest of the, the congregation. But uh, sometimes we got to do that. And that's what I see is happening in this passage here. Wake up, soul. Wake up. You're a living gateway. Lift up your head, you doorways to eternity. You are a doorway. Woo! I'm going to talk myself into some encounter here if I'm not careful. <laughs> You're a living doorway 
to eternity for those who are around you. You are opening up vibrant conduits of the exchange between heaven and earth. You're creating a ladder, a ladder which is a mechanism or vehicle by which people's faith can begin to touch the heavenly realms. And so, uh, oh gosh, I just about fell over the cliff. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, it goes on to say, welcome the king of glory. For he's about to come through you. Now, the truth is he's already come through us. He's already uh, translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his dear son. And now that we're relocated, using mirror Bible translation language, now that we're relocated, we get to bring that, that light, that heavenly empowerment, that heavenly vibrance to those who are around us. Okay, so I don't know if I muddied the waters <laughs> or if it, if it was helpful, but um, I'd like to just, if you if you want to go with me, uh, uh, like, I guess I'm kind of already there. <laughs> I, I kind of fell into what I was going to lead us into, and that is uh, just to uh, have that awakening. That, that that spark of life, it's like jumper cables on a car, you know, and it's like there's a spark when you put that cable on the battery, you know, and it's like, okay, there's some power here. Let's see, and that engine goes, and takes right off. So, uh, first of all, a little pep talk for us all. Uh, we are living gateways using... Uh, Passion Translation language. You're a living gateway. You're a doorway of eternity. You're already in eternity, and you're already well situated in the eternal places. You're already in the heavenly places. You're seated there with Jesus. There ain't none higher. None higher. You're seated in the best seat in the house, in the universe. That's where you are. So how are we doorways to uh, doorways of eternity to those around us to those in our earthly places that our feet walk on but our heart and head or spirit is in the heavenly places and so your living doorways and gateways of eternity doorways of eternity uh like i said the, the highest place in in all of eternity, the best seat in the house, you're in palatial environments right now. That's where we are. Our mind is getting upgraded slowly, but let's say surely, <laughs> it's getting upgraded into the ways that God sees about me. Listen up, mind. You are a living gateway and a doorway of eternity. And the King of glory wants to come through you in mighty ways. Who is this King? He's the King mighty in battle. He's the King. This is the King that wants to come through us without sweat and duress, without whining and grunting. He wants to come through us as we find ourselves relocated, not just theologically, but experientially, and our mind beginning to adopt and adapt to the new, to the upgraded, to the new and improved understanding of who we are in God's eyes. So I speak to my soul and I speak to my mind. As Romans 12, 2 says, you're in the process of being renewed. Yes, you are. Sometimes I have to take precedence over you. I have to take authority over you. My spirit has to step up to the plate. It, my spirit is learning how to do that more consistently and require you, my mind, to come into line. And I bless you, though, because there is royalty up on you. There is dignity and stature. There's heavenly favor 
upon you, my soul. Listen up. You carry the very DNA of Jesus. He's your firstborn brother. He's your eldest brother. And you're of the same DNA. And I bless you, my soul, as you come into alignment and oneness and union with him. I bless you, my soul. Oh, we have got the most wonderful uh, future ahead of us, filled with amazing, um, oh, royal, royal uh, activities. Gosh, I'm just trying to think how it, how we even compare ourselves or speak in the same language as we would speak of Jesus. Well, that's what Jesus speaks of me. That's what Jesus speaks of you, my soul. I'm talking to you. That's what Jesus sees over you. Wake up. Wake up. Grow up. Come on up. Come on up to your full height. Oh, this is the most glorious day in all of history so far. There may be better ones ahead, but this is the best one so far. Wake up and enjoy and smell the coffee. It's time to walk into our destiny, walk into our reality, walk into our heights of our callings, and favor in God. I bless you, my soul. Oh, we're going to have the best time ever. Lord, I speak that over us as a group. I speak that over others who are coming into this in our in the world around us. Oh, Lord, I bless this reviving, this revelation, this coming alive. I bless this coming aliveness, or whatever we call it, to where men and women's hearts come into their fullness of their height of glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in the earth and how it's coming alive in us, too. You're amazing, Father. Thank you so much.